What's up, everybody? This is Jed Johnson from DieselCrew.com. They call me Napalm. What do they call you? That's the question. Actually, the question today comes from Matt Brown again, <clears throat> and he wants to know if I would recommend training the fingers either in pairs or individually in order to bring up support grip for things like deadlifts, axle, etc. So, unfortunately, something happened recently where a new grip trainee was doing what I believe was uh, two finger deadlift. So they were doing deadlift with the, the first two fingers on each hand and they ended up sustaining an injury. Um, so the answer to the question is most likely not. I probably wouldn't recommend someone do that. However, everybody's different. Just because this lifter is new to grip doesn't mean they're new to lifting. So it could have been a freak accident. It could have been, you know, something that had already been started and then the two finger deadlift really, you know, took it a little bit further and caused that, that damage to the muscle. It's hard to tell, but there are some things that I consider pretty darn high risk. And not only would I not suggest most people try them as a new lifter, but um, I question whether it's even necessary to do them at all and I wouldn't do some of these things. So I don't like doing deadlifts with only um, two, two fingers or one finger. Um, one finger lifts in general, I don't like doing. Um, new people, I really don't suggest they even start bending until they've got several weeks of uh, conditioning in their hands. And I, in my nail bending ebook, I actually lay, a, I believe it's a six week program out where you work not even grip lifts but like wrist and forearm uh, exercises at a progressively higher level over time in order to get your hands used to the rigors of grip training and uh, develop some of that conditioning so that when you do bend you don't get hurt because that's what I did when I started I when I found out about grip training I didn't even just start grip training I did like like a buildup of volume over several weeks of just forearm training. And I didn't get hurt right away. <laughs> I started getting hurt when I started uh, bending, doing strongman competition training and a bunch of other grip work on top of it all at the same time and zero recovery work. So that was the problem for me. But, you know, some things, even like uh, you see the strongman feet where they, they put a nail um, they wrap like a nail in a towel and then they slam it down through wood to pop a balloon or they slam it down through a pan or something like that. I, that kind of stuff, if something goes wrong, you can get hurt really bad. Even Dennis Rogers himself has had, um, at least one severe injury from that where the, the rag and the nail went into his hand just because there was a problem with his setup from what I understand. So... You know, training individual fingers in combinations like that requires the muscles in your forearms to work in a way that they've never done. So I certainly wouldn't go for a max effort lift in, in that manner unless you've done, I would suggest probably six weeks of conditioning training. And, and because I don't have experience with it, I still don't know if that's enough to prevent injuries. A person that would be better to talk about with that as far as like the proper uh, ramp up approach for something like that would be James Fuller in the Strongman Archaeology group on Facebook. Um, but yeah, there's 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 lots of stuff that uh, I, I wouldn't recommend. Anything that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on a joint, isolates fingers, um, negatives, gripper negatives. We've already talked about that this month. I don't recommend negatives to most people until they're, you know, several months or even years into grip training there's just so much that can go wrong there and doing um a heavy intense negative where you open the gripper up all the way i mean that's injured people that have years of gripper training in and they take years to get back to their their previous level so you know rim lifts heavy rim lifts um there's a there's a tool out there called the rim top that is is really bad 
um, has a has a history of hurting people bad. Uh, that kind of stuff where you know where you're just using like the distal joints of your fingers and a lot can go wrong there, guys. Serious stuff, believe me. And I and I've had those injuries. The fact is, injuries can happen at any time. It's a matter of weighing the risks and asking yourself the risk to benefit ratio. Where does it lie? And hopefully the risk is down here and then the benefit is up here. But if the risk is here and the benefit is minimal, does it really make sense to do that, guys? That's how I think about stuff. I hope this has been helpful. If it was and it helped open your eyes a little bit, give it a thumbs up. I wish all the best to that lifter that got injured. Um, not going to bring the name up. And uh, go ahead and leave a comment below if you have any other questions. We do have a few days left in the month. I'm doing this to say thank you for helping me get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you'd like to ask something, go ahead and do so. If I don't get to it this month, I will log it for the future. And, uh, oh, be sure to subscribe. The next goal is 15,000. And share. If you want to help me out, you will be able to do so big time by sharing this video somewhere. And help a new grip trainee stay safe by listening to this video. All right? All the best in your training, everybody. Take care.